let's look at a basket of eggs and do an initial evaluation to see which eggs we want to wash and which ones we want to keep. Now you may be thinking, you're gonna keep all of them, and you may, but there is research that indicates that really dirty eggs have a higher potential for bacterial contamination and mold contamination. And so before we get out of the gate and go ahead and wash these, we wanna pull any eggs that may have that contamination so that as they're sitting in your fridge or sitting in the customer's fridge, they don't develop any sort of rots or interior molds. So looking at this egg basket, there's a variety of species here. We have some duck and some chicken eggs, but I wanna pull out some that may be a little bit dirtier that you either wanna keep for yourself and use immediately or those that you don't wanna pack. And so most of these are pretty darn clean. For a duck egg, That's this is probably as dirty as you want it for a duck egg. Um, they just tend to lay on the floor and they get a little dirty. But this duck egg was actually laid in a puddle of mud outside. See how dirty that is? That dirt will come off, but the eggshell is basically contaminated. That dirt goes into the pores of the shell and can cause some interior rot. So I would pick this out and I would not wash this egg and sell it. This egg is one that was next to one that was broken in the nest. So it's got some egg contents on it. It's also got some adhering wood shavings from the nest box. And you could pack this one, but just be aware that sometimes there's a lot of egg contents. There's a lot of yolk solids, there's a lot of egg white solids, and these are very difficult to clean. It might take multiple passes with the brush, and sometimes that can disrupt the integrity of the shell and may lead there to being a weak point where bacteria or mold can enter. So yeah, you could probably put this in a carton once it's washed and dried, but you might not want to. The choice is up to you. When washing eggs, we have a wide variety of implements to use. In commercial production, there are large machines with scrubbers and jets and all sorts of fun things within them. But for us, processing eggs in our own kitchen or in a farm sink, we have more limited options, but we still have good ones. I'm gonna introduce you to four different items that we can use to clean eggs. And I'll talk about why I recommend or don't recommend them. So the first that we have here, we'll start with this brush. This is an older brush and it's a little bit worn out, but this is used by um, a farmer to clean eggs that might have some really heavy debris on them. Obviously, this person rubs the round of the egg with this part of the brush because that's what's worn out and this brush will need to be replaced. But brushes like this are really handy. They're nice because they can be rinsed regularly and they don't hold a lot of bacteria within them. This is a general kitchen sponge. It might be nice because it has an abrasive surface on the back and a softer surface on the other side that can be used to clean different parts of eggs. But what I would caution with this is that this rough side might scrub off some coloring on eggs. So for instance, eggs that have colorful blooms such as this one, see how it's speckled? This roughness on this kind of an, a sponge can actually rub off that color. We can talk about how egg color is laid down at a later date. Another thing to consider with sponges is that sponges can hold bacteria pretty well. We're washing eggs that are covered in dirt, fecal matter, maybe some blood, some feathers, and that all gets held up in a sponge. So unless you wanna throw out a sponge and replace it probably a couple of times a week, I wouldn't recommend using this for cleaning eggs. The next we have here is a rag. Rags are really nice because we can use them to clean eggs once and then go ahead, throw them in our washing machine and then they'll be cleaned and sanitized for the next time we wanna go wash eggs. They have some um, roughened surface so that they can scrub some debris off the, the sides of the eggs without causing too much damage. Um, and like I said before, they're great because you use them once, you throw them in the washer, they're reusable, good to go, they don't hold bacteria. And the final thing here is if you don't want to get fancy and you have a roll of paper towels, just pull off a paper towel. You can go ahead and use this to clean eggs. Generally, when I'm using a paper towel, I do fold it so that um, I have more of a scrubbing type object. But these are really nice because you use them once. When you're done, you don't have to wash them. You just toss them. So those are a couple of options that you have for cleaning eggs. We're going to go ahead and show how to wash a basket of eggs. You can wash them in different manners, but generally you don't want to soak them. Soaking eggs is really bad because it allows bacteria to get pulled into the shell and will result in a shorter shelf life of your eggs. So whenever we wash eggs, I recommend that folks use a basket so that water can flow through and um, it makes the debris also flow through the basket so it's not hanging out at the bottom of a container. 
So what I would say is before you get started, make sure that your sink is relatively clean. You don't want to be cleaning eggs in a dirty sink because that is a point of contamination. Um, this sink was just cleaned prior to us starting this video, so um, it is good to go. When we look at water temperature, we want to make sure that our water temperature is about 20 degrees higher than the egg's temperature. That allows the interior of the egg to expand as it feels that warm water on the surface and push contamination out through the shell pores. This is better for us and for egg longevity. Never wash eggs in cold water. You can wash in water that is a higher temperature than 20 degrees higher than the temperature of the egg, but if it's too hot, you may encounter something called thermal cracks where the egg expands too rapidly and a hairline crack will form along its exterior. So this water is hot enough. Um, it is warm to me. It's probably about 105 degrees or so, much warmer than 20 degrees higher than these eggs, but it's still safe enough that I don't think you'll get thermal cracks here. And what I generally recommend is going ahead and wetting the surface of the eggs. And when you do a small batch at a time, this is a good thing to do because it starts to loosen up that surface debris, gets water in there and makes it easier to wash off. I've got a paper towel here. One of the things that we saw in a previous video, this is my cleaning method of choice. I'm gonna go ahead and wet that. And when we use detergents on eggs, we wanna use either a neutral dish soap, generally no color, no fragrance, or an egg washing soap. Again, it's made to be food safe. Here I have a soap, it's Dawn, to be completely frank with you, but this soap um, I found does not leave any sort of chemical trace in or on the eggs, and it is food safe. So I'm gonna go ahead, squirt a little bit on my, on my paper towel here. This is a duck egg. Remember I said they're a little bit dirtier? So you can see all of the work that that water did already. Even if we just washed it with our hands, we get a lot of the dirt off there. But I'm gonna go ahead and gently massage the surface of the egg, hitting all of the sides, all of the angles, and then give it a good rinse. That's a clean egg right there. A Little bit of staining, but that's normal for duck eggs. And then we'll take it, pop it on the towel to air dry, and then we'll go through the whole basket that way. So now I'm gonna show what this looks like if I'm using a brush. So we'll pull out that egg that had the egg debris on it. Um, see how that's kind of stuck there? That's not really gonna come off with a, a paper towel, so I'm gonna use the egg brush. Go ahead and scrub that. Gentle circular motions. And yeah, that got all the egg debris off. So I'll just do a quick little shimmy around the shell. There we go, there's a clean egg. our eggs and going to pack them, we want to keep a few things in mind. First, obviously, if you have multiple species, you want to pack the eggs separate because we're required by law to label them as the species which produces them. So when I'm going through here, I know that some of these are duck eggs, so I'm going to go ahead and pull them out. These are the eggs that we washed earlier, but I'm going to go ahead and do the separation early. Okay, and then the next part of this is uh, size. So generally speaking, when a consumer opens a carton, they're going to want to see a pretty even size differential in here. So if we've got all these eggs, and then we've got one egg like this on the end, and then an egg like this somewhere in the middle, for instance, that doesn't look like a really uniform carton. It's not pretty. Consumers like uniformity. So what we would do instead is we would select eggs that are more closely uh, average. We would go ahead, put those in, and there you have a complete dozen. That looks pretty uniform. The next thing we're gonna look for is just general quality of the eggs. And I have a couple examples of eggs that might not meet quality and those that do. So a typical egg is approximately egg-shaped, 
it's not super round or super long. It has a wider end and a smaller end. And of course, one thing I need to mention real quick before we get any further is that when we pack eggs, we need to pack them narrow end down. And the reason for that is because there's an air cell at the top. And if we pack them upside down, we reduce those eggs shelf life. So pointy end down. And that's easier to find with an egg that's approximately normal shaped. The next thing is we want to look for any surface pimples. So this egg, for instance, has extra calcium deposits, and, can, and this one does too. Consumers don't really like this. They think there's something wrong with the egg sometimes. And we know that it's just extra calcium that the hens put on her shell, but folks don't always know that. So if your customer base accepts an egg like this, that's all right, you can go ahead and put it in the carton. But if they don't, you could just keep it for yourself and make yourself a nice omelet. Something else we don't want to pack are stains. So these are actually, even though they're washed, a stain is classified as dirty in terms of um, quality and is considered an edible. So we cannot go ahead and pack that. So anything with a stain that you can see should be kept out of a carton. Additionally, here's a crack. That's a pretty easy one to see. That's an impact crack. So something hit that egg and pushed the egg con or the eggshell inward. Sometimes there'll be leakers and leakers have a little bit of egg contents leaking out. Again, those cannot be packed. But using a flashlight, we can see some cracks that may have developed over the course of our washing that we can't see with the naked eye. So I think this one here, that looks pretty good, right? Nothing super abnormal about that. But when we shine a light through the shell, Boom, there's a crack. See that before. So use of a candling light can help us find defects that will uh, keep eggs that are subpar out of cartons. One more egg that I wanna show is this particular one. So typically, a hen puts a smooth coating over the surface of her egg when she's done with it, but sometimes there will be a rough surface. You can probably even hear that when the rooster stops crowing. But in any regard, roughened surfaces like this sometimes mean thin shells, and the customer doesn't always like how that feels, so you might want to consider also keeping eggs like this out of your cartons.